the Lord Jesus. Thank you, precious Lord, for in Jesus' mighty and precious name we pray. Amen. If you're happy to be in the presence of the Lord, just go into your, if you're in Zoom, if you're on the Zoom, uh, if you're on Facebook, just go and, you know, um, click on the um, emoji and just clap your hands. Clap your hands, clap your hands, raise your hands to the almighty God, raise your hands to the lamb upon the throne, raise your hand to the lamb upon the throne. Father, we give you praise and glory in Jesus mighty and precious name we pray. I want to welcome each and every one of us to this month's uh, voice of glory. And I believe that God has a word, God has a plan for each and every one of us. God has told us that this month is a month of divine remembrance. God has always shown up on this platform. Every time we meet, there is a, there's a word that God has for the church. God has given me a mandate through this platform to speak to the church. You see, every time I sleep, I wake up. Um, I, I'm happy first to be alive, but secondly, I begin to ponder um, when would Jesus come? Before I close my eyes every night, I remember one of my mentors who's going to be with the Lord today. Um, well, he's gone with the, to, he has gone to be with the Lord. And he said something to me about 30 years ago. He said it to many of us. He said every time he goes to bed, he plays his life. Um, like a video, everything that has happened, maybe that day or maybe the day before, he, he did not do it the day before, he plays it like a video and he, and he begins to reflect, Father, if there is anything in my life, if there is anything I am doing, if there's anything I have done that will not allow me to make it to heaven, as I close my eyes, if the rapture were to take place, Father, forgive me. He does that. He, used, he told us he would do that every night. And I am imploring us as saints that God wants us to reflect upon our lives. No one is exempt from this. Um, the, whether you are the pre preacher of the word, whether you are a, a, a member of a church, whether you are a Sunday school minister, whether you are an unbeliever, we must reflect every day, where will I spend eternity? Where would I spend eternity? And God has given me a, a mandate through this particular voice of glory platform to be a voice to the church and to prepare the church for his second coming. It doesn't mean that through this platform, God will not do signs and wonders, but the most important thing through this platform is to prepare the church for the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. We live our lives every day like Jesus doesn't matter. We live our lives every day like the 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 the, the rapture is 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 a figment of our imagination. No, it's not. It's a reality. The rapture is a reality. It is a reality through the scripture that one day there's going to be a sound of the trumpet and Jesus will come down and he will take his saints. He will take them with him. That's why we call it the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So I, I, I just want us to, you know, just fasten our seat belts today. Um, if you are on Facebook, share, share this message. You are a, 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 an evangelist, share this message to your loved ones. If you're on Zoom, Copy the link and share to your loved ones. This is a message to the church. This is a message to me. This is a message to you. This is a message that, that will, will, will help us if we were to close our eyes tonight. If we were to close our eyes tonight and Jesus calls us home, where would we spend eternity? So we are taking our scripture from Luke chapter 10 verses 25 to 37. Luke chapter 10, verses 25 through 37. My title today, and if the Lord helps us, the Lord helps us. The next time we meet, or even before the next time, we'll conclude this message. 
it says, which are you? I think the Lord um, spoke to us one time about the three sons. You know, when we talked about the prodigal son, but there's a different dimension today. He's talking to us through the book of Luke chapter 25, verses th uh, uh, chapter 10, verses 25 through 37, through the NLT. Which are you? Part one. And then I read. One day an expert in religious law stood up to test Jesus by asking him this question. Teacher, what should I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus replied, what does the law of Moses say? How do you read it? The man answered, you must, lo lo you must love the Lord, your God, with all your heart, with all your soul, and your strength, and all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. Right, Jesus told him, do this and you would live. The man wanted to justify his actions, so he, he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? And Jesus replied with a story. A Jewish man was traveling from Jerusalem down to Jericho, and he was attacked by bandits. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him up, and left him half dead beside the road. By chance, a priest came along, but when he saw the man lying there, he crossed to the other side of the road and passed him by. The temple assistant walked over, looked at him lying there, but he also passed by on the other side. Then a despised Samaritan came along, and when he saw the man, he felt compassion for him. Going over to him, the Samaritan soothed his wounds with olive oil and wine and bandaged them. Then he put the man on his own donkey and took him to an inn where he took care of him. The next day, he handed the innkeeper two silver coins, telling him, take care of this man, for his bill, uh, if his bill runs higher than this, I will pay you the next time I'm here. Now, which of these three would you say was a neighbor to him who was attacked by bandits, Jesus asked. The man replied, the one who showed him mercy. Then Jesus said, yes, now go and do the same. Now go and do the same. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So our questions, the questions that um, I pondered in my mind, and the Lord wants me for you to tell you so that you can ponder in your mind because every word that the Lord gives us um, through this platform or through any platform, he speaks to me first. He speaks to me first and then I speak it to you. So today the Lord is speaking to each and every one of us. He says, how have you been living your life? And he's asking me the same question. How have I been living my life? Am I only preparing for here? Here, and not even thinking about eternity. Am I preparing to, to, to make it here in the earth realm and not preparing for eternity? What are the changes that I have to make to live my life the way God wants me to live my life or to live a balanced life both here on earth while preparing for eternity. So when we identify what we need to do, then God wants us to begin to take steps uh, in the right directions. He wants us to begin to make those changes here now so that it will not be late when he calls us home. So Jesus was talking to a man who called himself and uh, who the Bible calls an expert. So in the parable that we, 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 of the Good Samaritan that we, had we have just read, there are some characters that the Lord revealed to me there. Number one, the man that was a so-called expert who was trying to test Jesus and, be, and, and who was trying to justify his actions. That's number one. Number two, person is the priest. Number three, 
is the one that the NLT version calls the um, the uh, 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 temple assistant. KJ, the other versions call him the Levites. And then we have the Good Samaritan. And um, so God is speaking through us, to us, through this characters today. So the expert who's supposed to know the word, who's, uh, who's learned, in, in, some, in some versions of the Bible, the, he's not called the expert, he's called the lawyer. Just for those of us who are learned people, who are lawyers, we know what lawyers do, we argue. We argue our cases so that we can win. So this man stands before Jesus and he wants to argue his, his case. He's a man who knows the, 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 the letters of the law. He knows the facts of the law, but he did not know the truth. He stood before the truth, but did not know the truth. He, he, he stood before Jesus and he was speaking facts. All he knew was the letter of the law. So this story points to us three different, well, four different people. Today, we are only going to address three of them. Luke 11, 28 says, but even more blessed are all of us who hear the word of God and put it into action. You know, the, the disciples were talking to the um, Jesus when um, he, he gave them the parable of the sore. And they were asking Jesus in, the, in Matthew 13, we're not going to read that. And he said, they asked him, Lord, why do you speak to the multitude? Why do you speak to them in parables? And uh, Matthew 13, 11, Jesus answered them. And he said, you are permitted to understand the secrets of the kingdom of heaven, but others are not. You are permitted to enter to, to you are permitted to understand the scripture, the secrets of the kingdom of heaven, but others are not. And God is saying the same to you. He's saying to, the same to me today. He said, we are permitted to understand because you are part of the voice of glory today. You are permitted uh, you, to understand what the scripture is, what the Lord, what the spirit is saying to the body of Christ at this time. We, we are permitted to understand. We are permitted to know the secrets. We are permitted to be able to unravel the secrets of the kingdom. Verse 13 says, the mm -hmm. others look, but really do not see. They hear, but don't really listen and understand. But you are here today. You are here because God has permitted you to listen, to hear, to understand the secrets of the kingdom. You are here today because you are the remnant. You are here today because you are the chosen ones. You are here today because you are the set apart. You are here today because you are not only going to be a hearer of the word, but you are here because you will do the word. You will live the word. You will be a doer of the word. I want you to pray for yourself today. I want you to prophesy over yourself that bless are my eyes. I will see what God is showing me. My eyes are blessed to see. My ears are blessed to hear. My heart is blessed to perceive and to discern. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I want you to take a minute and begin to pray for yourself. My ears are blessed. My ears are blessed. My eyes are blessed. My The eyes of understanding are enlightened. I would see what God is showing me. That I would see what God is revealing to me. I would hear what God is saying to the body. I will be a, a, a hearer and a doer of the word of God in the mighty name of Jesus. I will not just be a watcher. I will be a doer. I will be a doer. I will be a watchman and I will be a doer. I will be a doer of the word of God. I am the called out. And because I am the called out, I will be a doer. I will be a doer. 
Lord, I will not be cast away. I will not be cast aside. My life is good ground for the word of God to manifest, to germinate, to flourish, and to blossom in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And the ecclesia that the, God, the Lord is revealing his mind to. I am the called out that the Lord is revealing his mind to in the mighty name of Jesus. The word of God will not, I will not be blindsided by the word of God. The blood, the word of God will not, I will not miss out. I will not miss out on the word and the understanding of the word of God in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, 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 Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. So the expert or the lawyer, the priest, the Levite, or the temple assistant, and the good Samaritan. We're not going to be able to get to the good Samaritan today, like I said, but who are these four people? And I'm going to pick them out for us one by one. So um, if you're a leader in the church, if you're a worker in the church, just Permit me to speak the word that God is saying to the church. Permit me to speak what God is saying to you and what God is saying to me. Permit me to, to be that voice to us today, what God is saying to the body of Christ. And so the expert and the lawyer is the religious is the is the religious leader or the 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 the, the attorney or the one or, or, or the or the uh, leader in the church who knows the letter of the word. They know what every you talk about a scripture. They know where it is in the Bible. They can quote scriptures from Genesis to Revelation, uh, but they do not practice what they preach. The expert is the one who knows the scripture, who knows the letters of, uh, letter of the law, the one who has the knowledge but lacks the understanding. They are the one who, has, who are good at wanting to prove themselves. They are the ones who are, are good at wanting to be right. They are the ones who are good at wanting to, to, to show off their knowledge of the scripture but still do not practice the word of God. John 8, 32 tells us that we shall know the truth and the truth that we know will set us free. So if you are if, if the so-called expert, if you know the scripture, just the Lord is saying, take it one step further. Take it one step further. Practice what you preach. Practice what you know. And the Lord, who is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him, the one who is a rewarder of those who diligently, who diligently seek after him, who diligently seek after the truth, he will reward each and every one of us in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Can you relate? He wanted to justify his actions before Jesus. Can you relate? Can you relate? The second person is a priest. The Bible tells us that by, by, by chance, it was a coincidence that the priest came along. But when he saw the man lying there, he saw him. It wasn't like he did not see him. He saw the man lying down there. And instead of him going to him, taking a closer look, examining him, see what he could do to help him. The Bible says that he crossed over to the other side of the road and walked by. So who is this priest? He's the church leader. He's the pastor. He's the prophet. He's the apostle. He's a teacher. He's an evangelist. He's a fivefold ministry of those who are so involved in the work of the ministry, but not in the lives of people. Please forgive me again, leaders. He's a leader who sees, but he's not involved. He knows what to do, but he is too busy trying to prepare a good message 
He is too busy preparing for a revival. He is too busy focusing on the sheep. He's too busy because his nose is in the word, but not in the, in, the, in, in the people. We see people hurting, but we're so engrossed trying to deliver a message for the revival that is coming up. We are the ones who preach the word, but don't live by it. The priest probably saw that there was no one watching him. So he crossed the road and walked away. The one person who saw him was probably this man who was lying half dead. Well, I don't know him. I don't know him. I don't care about him. I have to go, I have to, go to my church and preach this message that God has, uh, has put on my heart. The, preach, the, the preacher, uh, the, the priest, is a preacher that uh, uh, is, is so engrossed in what the spirit of the Lord is saying in the word that he is, he's so, his, his head is so, uh, 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 so into cloud nine that like he's not even able to relate to what is going on in the lives of the people who are around him. I am the church as a leader that looks the other way. Like I said, the priest, it's not like, it's not that he's not born again, he is. It's not that he's, he, he's, it's not like he's not a church leader, he is. He's a pastor, yes, he is. He's an evangelist, yes, he is. Every title that he, he holds, he holds it in name alone because he is not doing what God said we should do. And we'll get there in a minute. So he's a, he's a person who sees the pain of, of, of the man who had been attacked by bandits and did nothing to him because he wasn't the, he's not a member of his church. He's the one who says, I see him, but I don't know him. I don't, there's, there's no relationship between myself and this person. Let somebody else worry about him and his problems. We are the leaders who see what is wrong from afar off. And our actions and inactions show that we don't want to be involved. Can you relate? The Levite according to NLT, the, 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 the NLT calls him the temple assistant. And I call him the elder in the church, the deacon, the church worker, the head usher, the Sunday school teacher, the one who is hurrying to perform their duties in the church. They are so engrossed in the duties of ushering. They're so en 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 engrossed in, 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 in the, the choir practice, going for the choir practice. They're so en engrossed in, in holding the microphone and leading the praise team. They are so engrossed in that they are rushing to the church to perform their work but they are not they are not careful to note that there are people who are in pain people who don't want to hear what you preach people who don't want to hear what you preach and only by, except you show them that you love them so he was too too engrossed in rushing to the church because he had to lead he had to or she had to lead praise and worship I call him a Christian, the member of a church who is, a, 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 who is in, in a hurry to hear the, the great message that his pastor, the next great message the, the, the pastor has to deliver. They're also not involved. They are in, 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 in our workplaces, they're in our uh, businesses, they're in our schools, they're, they're everywhere. They are the Christians who people do not even know are Christians. Can you relate? He's one that sees the problem of another person, but is not interested in solving anybody, anybody's problem except their problem or their family's problem, their immediate family's problem. They see, but they are not moved to action. They work in the church, but there is no fruit to show for it. That's Levite 
or that temple assistant is that person that goes to the four walls of the church day in, day out, listening to sermon after sermon, but not bearing no fruits of the, of, of the messages that they, they, they hear. They are like the priest who says, no one can see me. And because no one can see me, no one can see what I'm doing. I can, I can get away with it. I can get away with it. But God is saying to us in this month of beginning, in this month of September, which is the beginning of our months of divine remembrance, he says, I see and I remember. They're the ones who are up close to sinners, but don't preach the message of salvation in their workplace. They don't preach the message of salvation to their children. They don't preach the message of salvation to anyone close to them. People close to them are dying every day and going to hell and it doesn't even face them. They are the Christian who their workers, like I said, don't know, their co-workers don't know that they are Christians. They are Christians in the marketplace, in the offices, don't minister to unbelievers. It is not my concern. It is not my problem. That is what the temple assistant or the Levite thinks. They are up and close to see that the mission of the devil every day is to steal, to kill, and to destroy, but they are not moved, they are not, they are not involved, they are not concerned, it doesn't face them because it does not pertain to them. It does not pertain to them. So they hear the word and are not doers of the word. Someone this week sent me an article that blew my mind. And I wanna read this article to us. Please listen carefully. It says, a brother arrived in church five minutes after Sunday school. An elder noticed him, but did not ask him why he was late until after the service. Immediately after the brethren said the grace, this elder walked up to the brother and said, my brother, you came to church late today. I didn't even see your kids or your wife in church. What happened? And the brother said, it is well. And the elder said, no, 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 brother. Don't tell me it is well when it is not well. Tell me what happened. Why were you late to church? And why is your family not in church today? So with teary eyes, the brother said, okay, elder, I'll be transparent with you. I have serious financial challenges. My family and I didn't eat anything yesterday because we have no food in the house. I didn't want to miss church, the church service today. So I left home about 7 a.m. and had to walk two hours before, because I didn't have money to take a bus to church. So I'm sorry I missed the Sunday school. After the brother explained to the elder in tears, the elder held the brother's shoulders and said, it is well, my brother. The Lord will surely, surely provide. So he continued to say, this is the elder, he says, there are so many people who have gone through the same thing you are going through. And guess what? Their situations have been changed now. There is nothing God cannot do. God makes impossible situations possible. This is the elder preaching. Do not, do not, do you not know that problems don't last? People do. Do you know that our problem now, our country's problem is the government. Our leaders are not doing the right thing. It is well, my brother. Then he walks away. That leaving the brother dumbfounded. Can you believe that the elder had money in his bank account? 
and a couple of hundred dollar bills in his pocket. He had a pantry and a refrigerator full of food at home, but he walked away without helping his brother. The brother left the church that day, feeling worse than he felt when he came in. He had another, he had another two hour walk home. By the time he got home, he was sweaty, tired, and hungrier, and his wife and his children were still hungry. Brethren, the last time I checked, it is well the Lord will provide, cannot put food on your brother's table, especially when you can. We forget love is giving. We forget that love is an action word. It seems the part of the Bible which says, if you can't love your brother who you see, how can you love God you can't see has been deleted from our Bibles. So if only the early church in the book of the Acts of the apostles were given the uh, opportunity to look at us for a few minutes, I believe they will weep because the foundation they laid has been eroded. Going forward to our text, which are you? Are you the expert? Are you the prince or are you the uh, temple assistant? So the priest was a Jew. Listen to this. The Levite was a Jew. And so was the man who was wounded. So they were all from the same cultural background, just like this man that was in the church who wasn't helped by the deacon. He was a Christian. He was, they were all Christians. They were supposed to be brothers. But guess what happened? They did not help him. Who is that brother that you know needs help? You're preaching the, the scripture every day and you don't even see that your brother needs help. You don't see it. You don't see that your sister needs help. The priest, the Levite, and the, um, and the wounded man, they were all from the same cultural background. Guess who came to help? It was the one who was despised, the Samaritan. They saw what happened to their brother, but they did not do anything. God had to raise the Samaritan to help him. They were not helping their brother. Who was who was supposed to be of the same sect, same church, same denomination, same office. They could not help him because they could not see past their noses. So we call each other brother and sister, but are we really brothers and sisters? First John 4, 20 through 21 says, first John 4, 20 through 21, says, and I read, if someone says I love God and hates his fellow believer, that person is a liar. For if we don't love God that we see, how can we, if we don't love the people that we see, how can we love God we do not see? And he has given us this command, those who love God must also love their fellow believers. These characters that we're talking about today, the expert, the priest, and the Levite, they remind me of the church of Sardis. Let's look at Revelation chapter 3, verses 1 through 5 in the L L uh, NLT version. They remind me of the church of the Sardis. Some versions of the Bible call it a dead church. But God said it's the pretentious, pretentious church. Now, he writes a letter to this church, to the angel of this church. And the, the letter says, this is the message from the one who has the sevenfold spirit of God. This is, this is uh, uh, John writing to the church uh, as, 
as led by the Spirit of God. He says, I know all the things that you do, that you have a reputation for being alive, but you are dead. And he says, wake up, strengthen what little, what little remains for even what is left is almost dead. I find that your actions do not meet the requirements of my God. Verse three, go back to what you heard and believed at first. It's like, let's go back to the basics. Hold to it firmly. Repent and turn to me, me again, says the Lord. If you don't wake up, I will come to you suddenly as unexpected as a thief. This is the rapture. And it could be the death, the, the death of a saint. Yet there are some of, in the church in Sardis who have not soiled their clothes with evil. They will walk with me in white for they are worthy. Cha, cha, cha. So you have a reputation of being alive, but the scripture says that this church is dead. He says, go back to the basics. Go back to what you have heard. Go back to what you originally believed in. Go back to your first love. Hold it firmly. Repent and turn to me again. First John 5, 3 says, First John 5, 3 says, loving God means keeping his commandments and his commandments are not burdensome. Yes, God's commandments, they are not, they are not a yoke. They're not. They're easy to bear. They're easy to follow. God's commandments are not burdensome. So he took the, it took a despised Samaritan to do the right thing. Next time, if God permits, like I said, we'll talk about this Samaritan. Matthew eleven thirty says, but as many who are the greatest now will be the least important then. And those who seem least important now will be the greatest there. So what are the lessons that we learn from the priests and the Levites and the, and the experts today? Number one, like I said, go back to the basics. Number two, the first shall be the last and the last shall be the first. Number three, we can not only be Christians in words, we show we are Christians, not by preaching good messages, teaching the word, speaking in tongues, attending church services, but in our actions. The church must begin to think seriously about legacy. We must begin to think seriously about posterity. Do what is right, even when no one is watching. Do what is right. Invest in the lives of people who are down, not people who are up. People who know will reward you. Who you know will reward you. Invest in the lives of people who cannot say thank you. Look for the reward from God and not man to reward. We must remember always that whatever we sow, we will reap. Love is an action word. The Bible says that while we are yet sinners, Jesus died for us. Jesus died for this church. This, Jesus died for his church while we were sinners. We couldn't reward him, but he still died for us. Acts 1, 1 says, it says what Jesus began to do and to teach. What he began to do and to teach. John 13, 34 through 35 says, I am giving you a new commandment. Love each other just as I have loved you. You should love each other. 
your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. In this, the, our main scripture today, 10, Luke 10, verse 37, Jesus said to this expert who had given Jesus, he was, he quoted all the scripture. He said, Jesus said to him, go do likewise. Go do likewise. And God is telling me, he's telling you, let us live the word, not just preach the word. Let people know by our word, not, not, not by our words, but by our actions, that we are sons of God. All that you do will preach the message of our Lord Jesus Christ to this dying generation. All that we do, when we wake up in the morning, all that we do will mm. preach the message of our Lord Jesus Christ to this dying world. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 10 in the New Living Translation says, but I, the Lord, search all the hearts and examine secret motives. I give all people their due rewards according to their actions, not according to their words. Are you the expert? Are you the priests? Are you the, um, the, 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 the church assistant or the, temp, uh, the work in the church? Or uh, uh, are you a, a, a member of a church? Are you a Christian? by mouth, or are you the good Samaritan? Which are you? And the Lord is causing us to reflect today. Which am I? Who am I? Who am I? It's not what people say I am, but who I, I am. I know myself. I know who I am. God knows who I am. People may not know who I am, but God knows who I am. Those good seeds, good seeds I'm planting. Am I planting them with motives? Am I planting them because I know that there is somebody who will reward me? Who are you? Or which are you? Are you the expert? Are you the priest? Are you the temple assistant? Which are you? And so I want us to begin to go before the Lord today and to begin to repent of every of our sins. First, thank God for this word that God has brought to us. God is an on-time God. He knows that you need this word today. He knows that I need this word today. He knows that I need to repent. He knows that the church needs to repent. He knows that we are not living. We are not living the word. He knows that our actions are pulling people away from the church. He knows that our actions are causing the hearts of people to be, to be hardened. Nobody wants to go to church because the church that they see in the workplace is not representing Jesus Christ. I want us to begin to thank God for this word that will cause a turnaround in the trajectory of our lives, that will turn around in a turn, turn, turn to the, that will cause a turnaround in the church, that will cause a turnaround in the workplace, that will turn around in our families. I want us to begin to thank God, thank you for loving us so much, for dying on the cross for us, for shedding his blood on the cross. Thank Jesus for laying down his life. He showed an example. And because he showed us the example that we can follow, thank him. Thank him for the example he has laid for us. Give him the praise. Give him the glory. Give him the honor. Give him the adoration. Give him the worship. You know who you are. You know who you are. You know who you are. I want you to begin to ask the Lord to forgive you. Plead the blood of Jesus. Plead the blood of 
of Jesus. Plead the blood of Jesus. Plead the blood of Jesus upon yourself. Plead the blood of Jesus upon your heart. Plead the blood of Jesus upon your eyes. Plead the blood of Jesus upon your mouth. Let my sakatali I want us to begin to plead the blood of Jesus. I'm a shakatali kebo. Lay my sakatali I want us to begin to repent. Begin to repent of those things we have done that have pulled people away from Jesus. Those things we have done. My I have seen some people turn on their televisions, turn on their internet, go to Facebook, go to um, YouTube. They see the name of a preacher and they turn, they, they tune off because they know them personally. Maybe maybe because we have turned in the hearts of so many people away from the saving knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ, but that, that the Lord is giving us this message today, maybe because we are not living what we are preaching, that is why God has given us this word today, you know yourself, which are you, you know yourself, which are you, I want us to begin to ask the Lord to forgive us. Lord, we repent. We repent. We repent. Oh, masakatalia, masakatalia, masokotokobonikabo. He that covers his sin will not, he that, he that covers his sin will not prosper. Father, we want to prosper. We don't want to cover our sins today. We repent of the words that we say. Some of us, every word that come out of our mouth is it's, it's a curse word, and we, we still use the words in our mouths to preach the gospel. The Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So check your words. If your words do not align, we're not saying, to talk, we're not saying when you preach the gospel, we're saying when you talk naturally, when your natural self, check your the words of your mouth because out of the abundance of the words out of the abundance of the heart your words your mouth speaks the words flow from the heart and so if your words don't your, your words don't match your actions i want us to begin to pray lord purge my heart purge my heart today purge my heart today i want to be that i want to be that example the example of a wife i want to be the example of a pastor. I want to be the example of a preacher. I want to be the example in my church. I want to be the example in my in in in, in my office. I want to be my the example in my in 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 in, in my business. Some people, you know, you have businesses where people walk in, you walk into the business business. Everybody's scared of you, but you call yourself a Christian. And God says that you should examine your heart. You are a leader, but you do not lead by example. You lead only by words. God says we should repent. Forgive us, O oh Lord. Forgive me, O oh Lord. Forgive me, O oh Lord. Cleanse my heart, O oh Lord. Cleanse my tongue, O oh Lord. Cleanse my words, O oh Lord. My I want my life to bring people to the saving knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. So, Father, help me. Help me, help my brothers, help my sisters, sisters that are watching, help my sisters and brothers that are watching today as we are praying. The church is praying. We are praying for ourselves. We are praying for the church. We are praying that the church will take her place in the workplace the church would take her place in, in 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 social media the church would take her place in the home the church would take her place wherever she is in the mighty name of our lord jesus christ we have sinned we have come short of your glory father we ask that you will come you will forgive us well, Father, we pray that you will forgive us. We must masakaba. We confess of every sin known and unknown. Malika those things we were supposed to do, we did not do. Those things we did, we 
shouldn't have done. Those things we said we shouldn't have said. Those things we did not say we should have said. Those things, those places that we have been quiet, and it, and it, and it looks like we are in agreement. When in our hearts we know we are not in agreement. Oh, Malema Sakani, God says that there's some of us who stand in, you know, in the mid, in the middle. We straddle the fence. We don't want people to know which side we are on. And today, the Lord is saying, "My I want you to take a stand for me, my brother. I want you to take a stand for me, my sister. Malema So so that's why you call upon me, my Sakatalima Sakuta, like I heard Mordecai, my Shakatalima Tokobodikabo, I will hear you, my Lema Sakata Kabalikabo, as you cry for me for the for your healing, my Sakatalima Sokobodikabo, I will hear you, my Lema Sakuta Kabalikabo, as you care for as you cry for uh, cry to me for your children, my Sakatalibo, I would hear you, my Lema Sakatalibo Sokobodikabo, my Shakatakabo Sokobodikabo. Remember, whatever you sow is what you reap. Thank you, Jesus. 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 And the Lord is saying, hurting people hurt people. You have been hurt. You have been hurt. And because you are hurt, you are hurting people. The Lord said, don't think about the people who have hurt you. I want you to begin to circumcise your heart. I want you to begin to cleanse your heart. Of every hurt, every hurt, every malice, every unforgiveness. And if you do that, the Lord says, you ask of me and I will answer you. I will answer you on the day of trouble. And, I, and as I see, the Lord says, there is a, there is a dear need in your life. This is your day of trouble. And I say, according to, to the spirit of the Lord, that you forgive so I can forgive you. You forgive so I can do what I have proposed to do in my heart for you. You have been the stumbling block for your, for, for your ministry. You have been the stumbling block for your miracle. I want you to let go so that I, God, can do all that I have proposed in your life, in your family, and in your ministry. Man of God, my you are a preacher of the word, but you are not a doer. I want you to repent, says the Spirit of the Lord. I want you to repent. You are the priest. Everybody knows you as the priest. I don't, because I have turned my eyes away from you. I want you to turn back to me. I want you to go before me. Go before me and repent. I have a greater work for you. But you have stopped my hand. You have stopped my hand. Unless you repent. Unless you repent. I will do nothing. So go before me today. Go before me today. You priest, go before me today. You Levite, you church assistant, you choir leader, you so-called Christian, you so-called expert, go before me today. And amend your ways. I'm a compassionate God. I will have compassion on who I will have compassion on. I will have mercy on who I will have mercy on. And I will have compassion on who you, I will have compassion on. It is not of him that willeth or him that runneth, but I, the Lord God Almighty, the all compassionate one, the one that shows compassion, the one that shows mercy, the one that says, I am the door. Whoever, whenever I knock and you open to me, I will come in and I will sup with you. 
open the door of your heart and I am coming in a fresh way. I want you to begin to ask the Lord to baptize you. Baptize you with fresh fire. Baptize you with fresh fire. Baptize the church with holiness and righteousness and the fear of God. Baptize you, baptize you. Father, we stand in God for ourselves. We stand in God for the church. We stand in God for your people. Baptize us, O Lord. Baptize us, O Lord. You are the head of the church. Be our head. You are our leader. Lead us. We will follow. Your, 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 your commandments are not burdensome. So, Father Lord, because they are not a yoke, give us the grace to follow you. Give us the grace to follow you. Give us the grace, oh Lord, to follow you. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus. Father, we thank you. Lord, we bless you. We give you praise. We give you glory. There is that person who needs healing. I stretch my hands, physical healing. And that there's uh, that person who needs the healing of their heart. Pastor Paul, I cannot do it in my strength. There are so many people who have offended me. I stretch my hands. There's a mighty presence of God. There's a mighty presence of the spirit of God in our midst. I cannot do it in my own strength. Yes, I cannot do it in my own strength. Yes, I cannot do it in my own strength. Yes, I join my hands with yours. I lay my hands on you. Let's just agree together. God is able to do exceeding abundantly. Above all that we ask or think. Uh, God can touch you. God can touch you and he's touching you. Yes, in the area of your hurt. In the area that you have been wounded. You have been wounded by people who love you. Kalima Saka, who are supposed to love you? You have been wounded. And the Lord says, that if you can let me, I will, I will, I will, I will heal you. If you can allow me, I will heal you. Father, that man, that woman who's stretching their hand and touching my hand, my hands, my hand become your hands today. Let there be a healing, a flow of your healing virtue from the crown of their heads to the soles of their feet. You were wounded for their transgressions. Yes, you were bruised for their iniquities. The chastisement of their peace was laid upon you and by your stripes, they are made whole. By, their, by your stripes, they are healed today. So receive the healing power of our Lord Jesus Christ, healing in your mind, healing in your heart, healing in your body, in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is healing destinies, healing destinies, turning, uh, turning destinies around. What the enemy meant for evil, the Lord has turned it around for your good what the enemy meant for evil. I'm looking at somebody's closet. And somebody put something, there is a point of contact. There is something in your closet. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus. There is something in your closet. That is a point of contact for the enemy. I want you to go into that closet. If you do not have an anointing oil, I want you to anoint a bottle of oil and anoint everything in your closet. Anoint every shoe in your closet. Break the hold, every connection, annul every power. Every point of contact, everything the enemy has been using as a point of contact in your family, annul it, destroy it in the name of Jesus. 
anoint your clothes, anoint your shoes, everything in that closet. Be anoint it, anoint them, anoint them. Malema Sakata Likabo. Bible tells us wherefore we have been given a name that is above every name. That at the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow of things in the heavens, things on the earth, and things under the earth, and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God. Everything that defies the name of our Lord Jesus Christ in that closet. We are not their powers, we destroy their powers over you, over your family, in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus. Thank you, precious Lord. We give you, Lord, all the praise. We give you the glory. The heavens is open over us. I want us to begin to thank God for today. Give him the praise. Promise him that you will no longer be an ineffective Christian. That you will be and he, you will be his eyes, you will be his mouthpiece, you will be his hands, you will be his feet. In the mighty name of Jesus, thank him, thank him the Lord for making you his eyes, thanking you him for making you his mouth, thank him for making you his his hands, his feet. In the mighty name of Jesus, promise him you will go where he leads you, you will do all that which. He commands you to do. The Lord bless us for doing the work, for, 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 for obeying the word in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, precious Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. Let's give a clap offering to the King of Kings and to the Lord of Lords. Give a clap offering to our Lord Jesus. Give a clap offering to our Lord Jesus. If you have a prayer request, if you have a praise report, just type in the chat. The, our team will go into the chat and you know they will let us know. Uh, our team will go to the Facebook. If there's any praise report, um, just, just, just type. Type your praise report type your prayer request, type them in the chat. And I believe that God who sees you, the God who sees, he says, I see, he will see you. He has seen you, he will reward you and he has rewarded you in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's give Jesus a clap offering. Let's give Jesus a clap offering. If you love the Lord, if you are his church, if you are his ecclesia, Let's give God the praise. Yes, we are his hands and we are his mouthpiece. We are the examples that unbelievers, the wounded, the wounded in that church, in that church, the wounded in, that, in the marketplace, the wounded in our offices, we are the ones they are looking at. We are the ones God has set in place to heal, to heal them of their wounds. I want to thank each and every one of us tonight, this afternoon, this morning. God bless you in Jesus' name. Over to you, Sister, uh, Sister Vincia. Thank you. By way of announcements, if we will turn our attention to the screen. The next Voice of Glory will be held on Saturday, October 8th at 10 a.m. Eastern Time, 2 p.m. Liberia, 3 p.m. United Kingdom, 4 p.m. Nigeria and South Africa, 5 p.m. in Germany and Saudi Arabia. Pardon me.
The 2022 total makeover will be held on November 5th, 2022 at the Government House of Restoration in Jonesboro, Georgia. Once again, the total makeover for 2022 will be held on November 5th. It will be in person and via Zoom and Facebook Live as well at the Government House of Restoration in Jonesboro, Georgia. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow Woman on Purpose on Instagram to receive the new Woman on Purpose weekly devotional. This devotional is voice recorded and it is heart transformational. The Woman on Purpose revised edition is now available on hardcover. Get your hardcover paperback copies and audio copies on Amazon. Please take notice of our ways to connect. You can connect with Woman on Purpose on Facebook at Woman on Purpose Ministry on Instagram at woman on purpose underscore. You can connect via the web at www.womanonpurpose.org. Or you can email us at info at womanonpurpose.org. You may not be able to join us in the street when we do our outreach ministries, um, or you may not be able to come to our functions, but you can support the ministry by saying, while I can't go to the streets with you, my money can reach you from the distance and make a difference. Please view the following flyer on ways to give and support the Woman on Purpose Ministry financially. There are five ways to give. You can give via PayPal using info at womanonpurpose.org. You can give via Cash App using the cash tag dollar sign woman on purpose. You can donate online by visiting womanonpurpose.org and click the button that says donate now and follow the prompts. You can give via Zelle using the first name woman on, last name purpose, or email Pastor Bola, that's P A S T O R B O L A, at woman on purpose. Dot org or by using the telephone number 678-887-1225. And finally, if you would like to mail a check, you can do so by completing your check and sending it um, to Woman on Purpose. Put Woman on Purpose in the pay to line and sending it to PO Box. 2910 Stockbridge, Georgia 30281. Before we read our closing scripture for today, thank you so much, uh, Sister Vincia. Give me just a minute. Mm -hmm. Um, our next, we have a couple of um, events coming up. Um, the total makeover is for leading ladies. 
Are you a pastor, senior pastor's wife? Are you a female senior pastor? Are you a pastor's wife? Do you lead or aspire to lead a ministry in your local church? Do you lead or aspire to, to lead a ministry or a nonprofit organization outside the walls of the church? Do you have a passion or do you want to serve God and his people in a greater dimension than to Total Makeover Leading Ladies um, Summit is for you. We encourage those people who live in, in, in um, Georgia to come in person. It's always very, very powerful when you are in the space, but those, those of us who are out of state or in other countries, God will meet you via um, Facebook and YouTube, not Zoom, Facebook and YouTube also. So November 5th, starting at 10 a.m. Eastern, all roads lead to government, um, House of Restoration, 95, 94, Terra Boulevard in Jonesboro, Georgia. We are going to send um, the um, information out. Um, we just presented to you the save the date. There are going to be, there's going to be a very, it's going to be a very, very powerful, powerful um, conference. And our theme is rise above beyond the call. What does that mean? If you want to find out what that means, be a part of the total makeover. Free registration starts on September 30. That's why you have to be, you have to sign up for our contact list. Sign up to receive emails. Be a friend, friend, a um, uh, uh, woman on purpose ministry on Facebook so that you get everything, information on everything that we're doing. But I, I bet you that when, if you are very serious about the call of God upon your life and you're a part of Total Makeover this year, you would see a difference in your life in the mighty name of Jesus and your ministry, whether you have started it or not, or God has, you have a passion for God and you know that God has called you to something greater Meet us on November 5th, 2022, at Government House of Restoration. The, the, um, uh, Sister Vincia, please put the flyer up again. 95, 94, uh, Tara Boulevard in Jonesboro, Georgia. Jonesboro, Georgia, yes. Put that flyer up again. You can take a picture of that, of the flyer. And we're going to have discussion sessions we have some more some more um things that you know god has prepared for each and every one of us just come and see what god has in store for you thank you all so much and do we have any prayer prayer requests any prayer requests no if there are no prayer requests um, over to you uh, what you Vincent? thank you very much pastor bola um if we can have the closing scripture uh thank you for that i was if there are no prayer requests or praise reports and I don't see any on this side we will close our broadcast the voice of glory with the declaration of Psalm 37 verse 40 over our lives the first time we read it it will be individualized and the second time we will make it corporate. So let us read as it's presented on the screen. 
and the Lord shall help, shall help me, me and deliver, and deliver me. me. Oh, he shall deliver, deliver me, me from, from the, the wicked, wicked and save, and save me oh, because oh, I trust oh, in him. Oh, we can have the next slide. We will read it corporately. It will change me to us. And the Lord God shall help, help us, us and deliver and us, deliver us. And he, he shall, shall deliver, deliver us, us from the from wicked the and, and save us. us because we trust in him. In the name of God, the father, amen. God, the son, amen. God, the Holy spirit, amen. May his spirit rest, rule and abide with us today. Amen. Amen. And all the days of his, of our lives, Amen. surely his goodness and his mercy Amen. shall follow me all the days of my life. And I, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us on this broadcast, The Voice of Glory. Do have a glorious experience in the presence of the Lord until we meet again. God bless you.